Good evening, viewers and the family of Green Pastors Tabanakon. It's a pleasure today uh, back to Midweek Connect again. My name is Betty Masaka, Pastor and Green Pastors Tabanakon, and welcome to tonight's episode. We have been dealing with social issues in Kenya, but today we want to go back and answer your questions that you've been asking about the Holy Spirit and any other biblical questions. So welcome. I would like to request that we share, subscribe, and uh, uh, just let others know that we are on and let's listen and learn today. So welcome as I ask the bishop to, to pray for us and we go on with the program. Father, we thank you this evening. We praise you for giving us another opportunity to address questions that have come from your children. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is helping us to learn and to understand the things that you want us to know so that our work with you can be better informed and fruitful. Thank you for everyone that is listening today. I pray that the things you speak will be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So good evening, Bishop. Good evening, Pastor Betty. Yes, so we, we are going back to questions. Yes. We have asked a few people and even church members to send in. Yeah. And they have a few questions on the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and also on other Bible uh, teachings. Mm -hmm. So we start off today. Someone mm -hmm. is saying that uh, in church they're seeing little manifestations of the gifts in our services. So he's asking two questions. What could be the challenge and how can we address it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is an important question. I think there is some time, either last year or the other year, somebody had asked the same question. Okay. And I think it's a very important question mm -hmm. because um, when we read things in scripture and we see a discrepancy or disparity, yes, it is good for people to have questions. And it is through questions that we learn. When mm. people ask the right questions, they learn. And this is a good question. Mm. Um, the word manifestation comes from the Greek word phanerosis. Uh -huh. Phanerosis. And it means a making known, an exhibition or an expression. That is the act of demonstrating. Uh -huh. So demonstration basically simply means the Spirit of God is actively uh, manifesting or showing something. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is where now things get a little interesting because um, uh, we need to understand that here we're talking about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, not the manifesting of demons. True. Because these are two different things. Yes. Of course, demons many times will manifest as a reaction Yes. to the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes. So, but, but we need to draw a distinction that mm. uh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is different from the manifestation of demons because mm. manifest, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, especially if you read scripture, mm -hmm. you discover that it has something to do with just the working and the functioning of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When mm. the gifts are um, activated, mm. That is what the Bible refers to as a manifestation. Mm -hmm. And it always helps to read scripture. First Corinthians 12, mm -hmm. verse 4 to 11, the Bible says, mm -hmm. there are diversities of gifts, yes. but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works. So there is diversity in several things. Yes. Ministries, in uh, activities, but the Bible says there is the same, there is the same God who works. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for okay. the profit of all. So the beginning point is for us to know that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not a preserve okay. of a small group of people. Uh -huh. It is given, according to the Apostle Paul, it is given to each one. And the reason it is given is so that the whole church will benefit. It's mm. not for private use. Uh -huh. It is for the whole church to benefit. Mm. For Then he goes on to talk about the different manifestations now, uh, or gifts if you like. For to one is given the word of wisdom mm -hmm. through the spirit, mm -hmm. to another the word of knowledge mm. through the same spirit, yes. to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, and to another different kinds of tongues, um, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each individually as he wills. So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the expression of the nine spiritual gifts functioning and operating through the spirit-filled believer. Yes. So, so, so let's just not complicate this thing. It is simply the gifts of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. when they are at work in the spirit-filled believer. Mm -hmm. That is what manifestation is all about. Yes. Now, if we desire to see more manifestations of the Holy Spirit ministry, mm -hmm. then we need to be cultivating these beautiful gifts to the functioning, or rather to be functioning more regularly in and through our lives. Yes. So to start with, it is important for us to tell our viewer that uh, each believer has been given manifestation, everybody. Yes. Yes. So when we come together, let's stop looking at either the pastor or the worship leader or another brother there to start the manifestation. Everybody yes. has been given the capacity to manifest. Mm -hmm. So it would help when the church gets together mm -hmm. for everybody to come knowing that yes. they also have a responsibility mm -hmm. to, to, to manifest <laughs> or okay. to allow the manifestation. Okay. okay? Yes. Because again, the, the, the Bible says the spirit distributes manifestations as he wills. Mm -hmm. So again, it is not upon you to decide what you're going to manifest. True, true. Yes. I think we need to be very clear there. Yes. Because there seems to be a Pentecostal tradition that mm -hmm. uh, people can manifest at will no, anything they want. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> you can't just stand up yes. and, and start giving a word of knowledge. Neither can you just stand and begin to prophesy. Mm -hmm. Neither can you just stand mm -hmm. and begin to speak in a tongue that requires interpretation yes. for the sake of the, ch the church. Yes. So it is important for people to simply know I'm going, but the Lord can choose to use me in any way. Yes. And that's how church members need to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to understand when we come together in worship. Yes. And then finally, and this is important, the manifestations are for the benefit of everybody. Uh, that's another thing. Uh -huh. You know, the spirit of God does not move to make us heroes or, yes. or celebrities uh -huh. or to, you know, lift us up. Yes. And uh -huh. and this is this is again the tragedy of the move of God and the spirit of God. Because mm -hmm. you find mm -hmm. when brethren begin to move powerfully in a particular gift, yes. then it almost becomes private and even commercialized. Oh. And we begin to want almost to make that person the, the center of interest. Yes. That is the only one we keep calling for mm -hmm. meetings mm -hmm. because he's the one who moves mm -hmm. in that particular area. Mm -hmm. And it and, and looks like now everybody else sits back and we let the professional and the expert flow. So I'm explaining why we don't see much. Uh -huh. Those are some of the reasons why we don't. Mm -hmm. So supernatural gifts are to be experienced regularly in the life of the believer and mm -hmm. also the church. Mm -hmm. And for me, there are just two reasons why this doesn't happen. One, mm -hmm. lack of biblical framework okay. for expecting manifestations of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge has been, uh, you know, Pentecostalism was born at a point when people were tired of religion, yes. and religion mm -hmm. was associated with the organized and educated church. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we seem to have just uh, run after the Spirit, and we forgot the place of study, and proper frameworks. Uh, so you find that we began to just, uh, whatever manifested, we picked it and made it a doctrine. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Without going back to scripture and asking, mm -hmm. is this scriptural? Yes. And that's what you find when you look at very many Pentecostal traditions, mm -hmm. a lot of them are questionable scripturally. Okay. You, you okay. can almost see that we just pick something from somebody mm -hmm. and we ran with it simply because mm -hmm. uh, God was moving, was healing people, yes. but we never questioned it. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that we have a problem with. There's mm -hmm. no biblical, um, or rather, we, we, uh, we kind of don't have a, a, a biblical framework. It's very difficult to find a place where a pastor stood and has really taught the church from scripture how to move in the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and we will do it this year. Yes. At some point, wow. we will do it. Uh, because, and then at, at that point, mm -hmm. then now we should... 
people should freely be able to <laughs> to, mm. to manifest without fear because it's a proper basis. Yes. And then the second thing is there is actually ignorance of the gifts and our role. Mm -hmm. uh, many believers are ignorant yes. of gifts. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't teach as much. There was a season when people taught a lot of you know, gifts of the spirit. Mm. There was a season like that. Mm -hmm. But then it got to a point whereby we fizzled out, and especially when the minister, the, the, the prosperity well-being came in, mm -hmm. and then and this motivation of sounding preaching that yes. uh, is, is very powerful and strong in lifting the expectations and the hopes of people, mm -hmm. we seem to have let that go, which oh. is not oh. very good. Mm -hmm. So we need to get back and also clear that ignorance because ignorance basically is lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then there's another problem also, skepticism. People yeah. have become skeptical mm -hmm. because of the way gifts have been misused. Yes, uh, You find a lot of people have been hurt mm -hmm. because of the misuse of gifts mm -hmm. and uh, others have been conned outrightly uh, because somebody pretended to be moving in the gifts of prophecy, but uh -huh. they are just manipulating them mm -hmm. so that they can either get money or yes. control them. Mm -hmm. And the other one, which to me is actually very uh, strong, mm -hmm. is apathy, apathy or just lack of desire on the part of the believers. Mm -hmm. Believers don't seem to desire the uh -huh. gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So how do we address it? Because mm -hmm. you had asked two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, mm -hmm. we need to know and understand the purposes and the power of spiritual gifts operating in the believers and in the church. Mm. And, and that we need to know. And knowing comes as a result of being taught. Mm. And like I said, there are many ways to be taught. You can mm -hmm. read books, mm -hmm. you can attend a seminar, and the pastor can take some time and just teach believers mm -hmm. on, um, on, on, on the purpose and the power mm -hmm. of the spiritual gifts. And like I said, one of the things we intend to do this year is just to spend some time and teach mm. on the purpose. What are the gifts for? Mm -hmm. And what is the power of the gifts operating in the midst of the church? Mm -hmm. And then number two, we need to sincerely and honestly seek to see these gifts released and flowing mm -hmm. in our midst. Mm -hmm. You see, the Bible says that we should desire, or rather honestly desire, Mm. Honestly, yes. desire these mm. gifts, mm. and and I have about three verses. First mm. Corinthians two of one. Yes, the Bible says, but honestly desire the best gifts. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yes, desire the best. It, it looks like there are best gifts and less best gifts, yeah? mm -hmm. but that maybe will come when we start teaching. We will deal with that. Mm -hmm. And then in First Corinthians fourteen one and verse thirty nine, the Bible says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Yes. <laughs> so, so there is, there is, so, so the brother or sister is asking, what, what is our level of desire? Mm -hmm. Because again, if there is no desire, it's very difficult to see these manifestations. So, and then he says, desire, but especially that you may prophesy. Apostle Paul seemed to have elevated the prophecy uh, in this discussion, uh, 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 and and we will again talk about that a little later. Uh -huh. Therefore, brethren, desire honestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with the other tongues. Mm -hmm. You notice that? Yes. So, so there's a place of desiring. And, and, and so in addition to knowing and understanding, believers need to begin to desire mm -hmm. and honestly desire. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, needs just ordinary people mm -hmm. to be available to him so that he can trust them with his gifts and then they can begin to operate in the church. So, so, so we need to create that framework in church where people know mm -hmm. that when they begin to move in a particular gift, mm -hmm. uh, there, there will be room. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the reasons why pastors, because pastors are the custodians, yes. and a lot of times I think we are responsible for stifling because I think we are too careful not to allow chaos <laughs> into the church mm -hmm. because churches that are very... Uh, good in gifts like the Corinthian church, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have a lot of problems because <laughs> if you open up the gifts mm -hmm. without a framework, mm -hmm. then there's a problem. And that's why the Apostle Paul wrote two letters to yes. that church. Mm -hmm. And if you read a lot of the stuff, he was just correcting and putting order. Yes. The problem is the church at Corinth mm -hmm. desired and really moved in gifts. Mm -hmm. But I think someone did the church injustice. Mm -hmm. They never provided a good biblical framework yes. on how and the protocols mm -hmm. on how to handle the spiritual gifts. So they ended up 
really making the church so divisive and so immature, so carnal, mm-hmm. and yet such wonderful. There is no other church that is said to have been moving in gifts like the church at Corinth. Yes, but uh, when you look at also the size of the letters, <laughs> in fact, the two letters or, to the church in Corinth are the longest yes. uh-huh. of all the epistles of Apostle Paul. All, uh-huh. So meaning he had... <laughs> He had so many things to address. Mm-hmm. So the more the eruption of the gifts, the more mm-hmm. chaotic things are likely to become. Mm-hmm. And that's why it is important as a pastor to really like just teach your members and then provide a safe and a good framework, both for the body mm-hmm. and also for the individuals that are practicing the gifts. Mm-hmm. I think the devil has a way of attacking a church that really opens itself up to the gifts. That's but true. we shouldn't fear. Mm-hmm. We should really, I think, step forward mm-hmm. and allow the Spirit of God to move. Because when gifts are operating, mm-hmm. you know, in the church, there's life, there's healing, there's mm-hmm. prophecy, there's mm-hmm. encouragement, there's education. Mm-hmm. And we miss a lot when we don't allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I concur with you, Bishop. Could could also we say, um, uh, Pastor Javi was sharing on Sunday, and he said, uh, he gave us the scripture in the book of Acts where after the apostles had been threatened, when they came back and prayed with the believers, they say the place was shaken yes. and they were filled again. Mm. Uh, could we also say, depending on our thirst in terms of seeking the Lord, if we don't seek the Lord, because I've seen where young believers and their pastors, they go fasting sometimes in the mountain. When they come back, the young people are flowing the gifts, but they're not aware. It's when mm. the pastor tells them, what oh, this is, you know. They just lay hands on people. You know that you're pushing them. People go down under the power. Maybe also the, as a church, we raise up, and not just us, but even the body of Christ, in the area of prayer. Mm. And the, some gifts are opened. Mm. Then there's another aspect of um, teaching. Mm. Once they are taught, mm. then you're able, because there's a place Paul clearly says that, when the prophecies come, we should test the prophecies. Yes. And also it teaches, I'm not sure if it's the book of James, it says we test the spirits yes. so that we know is this from God mm. or is it not from God like we see the time when Paul was preaching and this girl with the spirit of yes. divination yes. was speaking. And it looks like the first time maybe Paul thought, this is God. Mm. So if, and this is a man who was deep in the mm. things of God, deep in spirit, mm. deep in gifts, and mm. this could happen. Yeah. So if also the church is not prepared, mm. you may not be able to know whether is this coming from God or is it coming from another source. It's so, true. Yes. I totally agree with you. Prayer is critical because see, it's the place of prayer that opens up our hearts and also um, deals with the flesh. Yes. Because a lot of times, mm. spiritual moves are opposed by the flesh. Mm. If the flesh is too dominant, yes. it's very difficult for the spirit to arise. Yes. And mm-hmm. so prayer mm-hmm. prepares us mm-hmm. and makes us, uh, and that aspect of just stepping out and spending time in the presence of God mm-hmm. is an activation of hunger. Remember mm-hmm. Jesus said in that mm-hmm. last day of the feast, yes. he stood and says, if mm-hmm. anyone thirsts, yes. let him come and drink. And mm-hmm. the Bible says he mm-hmm. was not just speaking about drinking wine because mm-hmm. remember they had been feasting for yes. seven days mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. he couldn't have said that talking about wine he mm-hmm. was talking about the holy spirit mm-hmm. it's saying that there's need for the creation of hunger yes. so that when people are hungry for god then yes. he's able to feel them and mm-hmm. that is important Very we true. need to step into that place whereby it's not just um activated by um desire because we have come together in a service Mm -hmm. but our lifestyle even at home Mm -hmm. when we are at home Mm -hmm. we need to create an environment whereby we are sensitive and conscious of Mm -hmm. the holy spirit Mm -hmm. that he is welcome Mm -hmm. and we are open to him Mm -hmm. that when he speaks to us Mm -hmm. we can hear because the spirit manifesting can also manifest in a way that uh, is not necessarily spectacular True. But he's manifesting. For yes. example, uh, word of knowledge yes. uh-huh. or word of wisdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, God can give you wisdom in a situation that not many people may know that you have gotten the word. Yeah. But you, you know it. Yes. Okay. Uh, true, yes. Uh, okay. And, and, and that is important. Mm-hmm. And, and then also to add to what you have said concerning just God moving in his own way, mm-hmm. I think it's important. Because what happens is the challenge has been when the spirit doesn't move, then we move. And that (laughs) that has brought a lot of problems. Where clearly people can see this is fake. Uh, And 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 personally I think it the the move of God is so is so precious that we we give it a lot of dishonor 
when we fake it. Yeah. I don't think we need to fake. We just need to be ourselves. If people don't fall, don't force them to fall. If True. there is no prophecy, don't yes. prophesy. Mm -hmm. If there is no word of knowledge, mm -hmm. don't cheat. Don't lie. Don't True. tell people things they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And I think those are some of the things that quench the spirit that yes. he even doesn't want to move in the midst of people because mm -hmm. people are already mm -hmm. uh, destroying his reputation because mm -hmm. they are lying in his name. Yes. So when you prophesy a lie, mm -hmm. then the Holy Spirit is there listening. He, he is definitely vexed so and he doesn't do, do the church a lot of uh, service. Yes. Mm -hmm. How about... Uh... For example, mm. the gift of healing. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe we are comfortable in our sickness mm. because I, you can, you can correct this. I've had sometimes when we put a demand, you know, like when you come, when we come to the house of God, we we really long for God to heal us because we know He's the only one who can do that. Because we've had of cases where I think in those old time uh, revivals. Uh, maybe a minister has fallen, he drinks, mm. but when he comes like to the crusade, because of the hunger of the people, and of course, maybe he has fallen in terms of drinking, but the gift had been there. So the gift will move, not because he's good, <clears throat> but because God wants to heal his people. And of course, the Bible says the gifts of God are irrevocable. So even us as saints, when we come to church, that hunger, mm. because if I've heard even where people don't flow in particular gifts, but the Lord will move and heal because they ask, they demanded, mm -hmm. they, they are thirsty. It's like uh, telling God, we trust you that you're able to do this. Mm -hmm. Where man, mm -hmm. it's a level of thirst. Maybe mm -hmm. it's also our, our hunger and mm -hmm. thirst for God mm -hmm. to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Because when we truly hunger, he'll come and whoever is there can use that person to see that, you know, this need is met. I think you are saying what I had said earlier. Yes. It is something to do with apathy. Apathy, okay. Yeah, it's just uh -huh. apathy. When uh -huh. you don't care, you don't expect anything. Uh -huh. And you, 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 because if you don't expect anything, then uh, nothing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the spirit of religion. Sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. It's easy to fall back into it. Yeah, true. Thank you. True. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then there's also another question. Mm -hmm. I think we are done this a bit, but it's okay. We can repeat. Okay. It says, there is controversy mm. on the issue of tongues mm. as an evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So the pastor is asking, mm. okay, I think there are two different, but uh, there are two people who asked. So the other one is also asking, but it's almost the same. Mm. He's speaking in tongues, still evidence of a spirit Filled believer. Mm. Is it still evident? Yes, is it still evidence <laughs> of a spirit filled believer? Because it's a time it was. Okay, it seems so. But they also say there's a controversy of it being yeah. an evidence of the baptism. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I uh, think that question, and, and that is true. Uh -huh. I think there are a lot of arguments for and against, uh -huh. but um, uh, the best place to begin answering such questions is just the scripture. Yes. And when I was looking at the Bible, I found that there are three instances in the Bible mm -hmm. where believers spoke in tongues mm -hmm. after being filled with the Holy Spirit at the initial point mm -hmm. of that. Yes. And the first one was the upper room. Mm -hmm. The upper room is when the 11 disciples are gathered after Jesus is ascended. Yes. And the Bible says, Acts 2, 4, and they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit mm. and began to speak with other tongues yes. as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. So there are two important things here. First mm -hmm. of all, the Bible says they were all filled. Yes. But secondly, they spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. utterance. In other words, the utterance came from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. Then the second place we find something like that happening is at Cornelia's house. Remember, yes. uh, yeah. Peter is asleep mm. and God speaks to him, gives him a dream and he sees, uh, a vision rather, and yes. he sees a sheet being lowered with unclean animals yes. and he's told, arise and eat. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't understand what is happening. Yes. God is preparing him mm -hmm. because he needs to go to Cornelia's house mm -hmm. because there is gathered mm -hmm. Is some um, some 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 brethren there Actually, who Gentiles. are Gentiles? Yes, <laughs> they are not Jews. <laughs> yes, and at yes. this point, you know, these guys knew clearly they were they were Jewish. Mm -hmm. All the apostles were Jewish, yes. and except mm -hmm. Paul, who Jesus raises much later, mm -hmm. they were all confined to the Jewish nation. Yes, because mm -hmm. remember when this Samaritan woman whose daughter is demonized comes mm -hmm. and needs to be healed. Yes, uh, Jesus said, uh, "We cannot take." you know, bread, bread yes. and toss it to the dogs, dogs yes, because yes. 
clearly this was not meant for the Gentiles, yes. all right? Uh, but here is Peter and is being called to go and pray mm. concerning, um, I mean, uh, upon the Gentiles. So yes. verse 44 mm -hmm. to 46, the Bible says, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word mm -hmm. and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. Mm -hmm. Those of the circumcision were Jews, yes, Jewish believers, mm -hmm. okay? As many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out to the Gentiles also, mm -hmm. for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Mm -hmm. So these brethren were filled with the Holy Spirit then, yes. and they began to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible says that these ones who are of circumcision, the mm -hmm. Jews, yes. were shocked that even, even these the guys Gentiles, could actually yes. receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, and Peter later on even gives a testimony and says they were very surprised mm -hmm. that God would... Uh, shock them that way yes. because according to them mm -hmm. the holy spirit was meant for them yes and then the disciples of john mm -hmm. you know paul goes somewhere and finds some disciples mm -hmm. and they don't seem to have a clue of who the holy spirit is mm -hmm. so the bible says in acts 19 5 to 6 when they heard this they were baptized of mm -hmm. course he spoke to them mm -hmm. asked them then did you have you ever heard of the Holy Spirit? And they mm -hmm. said, We have never even heard of that. Then you ask them, then which spirit did you receive? Mm -hmm. And so he prayed for them. Mm -hmm. So verse six, and when Paul had laid hands on them, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophecy. So three instances yes. in scripture in the mm -hmm. New Testament we mm -hmm. find at the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit, yes. people are speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. So this appears to be a a president, yes, okay, mm -hmm. it is happening, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. But there are also instances in the Bible mm -hmm. where there is no record of people speaking mm -hmm. in tongues after mm -hmm. being filled with the Holy Spirit, okay, mm -hmm. okay, yes. And I'll give you two of them, okay. The first one is Apostle Paul himself in Acts chapter 9, verse 17 to 18. Mm -hmm. When Ananias went his way and entered the house, of course, where Paul was, yes. and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight mm -hmm. and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Immediately, there fell from his eyes something like sails, mm -hmm. and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So the only thing we see happening to Paul here mm -hmm. is scales, things yes. that look like scales falling yes. off his eyes. eyes yes. But he doesn't, there's no record that he has spoken in tongues yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But we later know Paul spoke in, in tongues. tongues yes. Because, yes. but it didn't happen, at mm -hmm. least, I don't know why the, the, the Holy Spirit would choose to focus on the scales mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and not the, the tongues. tongues yes. You understand? Mm. So, so he doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. But later on, Paul confesses that he spoke in tongues a lot in mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. Mm -hmm. He says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Oh. So it means Paul mm -hmm. was speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. but it, there is no indication that yes. he spoke in tongues, tongues. the mm -hmm. moment yeah, that he was prayed for by yes, Ananias. Yes, so yes. It's, it's safe to assume mm. the the indication of Paul's uh, being filled with the Spirit yes. was a falling off of something that looks like scales, scales uh, so that his eyes. sight... Yes, you could <laughs> see. You <yes. laughs> could see. Uh -huh. <laughs> then we have some believers in Samaria. Yes. In Acts 8.